They say the stunt was part of a promotion for a cartoon, and in their words, it absolutely was not intended to seem threatening. The move, though, brought out scores of local, state, and federal authorities, all taking uh, the possible threat very seriously. We began at Boston Police Headquarters. Seven's Dan Housley is there. Dan? Well, the mayor, the governor, and the police commissioner all say that the police sprung into action appropriately today, responding to these many hoax devices found around the city. Late this afternoon, they made the announcement that there was nothing to worry about, but all of it was a very elaborate, ill-conceived publicity campaign. That was a device under the Longfellow Bridge exploded by police late today. Late in the afternoon, Turner Broadcasting saying that that device and others found around the city were part of a publicity campaign for a cartoon character. Looking now, you see a map of all the different devices found around the city, from the Longfellow Bridge to the New England Medical Center, from Stewart and Columbus Street in the South End to the first device found at Sullivan Square in Somerville. At times, of course, those devices being found and police responding, it paralyzed the city. But late today, the governor, the mayor, and the police commissioner said there was nothing to worry about and everyone should go about their business. The investigation uh, continues. There is more information to be, uh, uh, to be developed. Um, but uh, I think we feel at this point that there is not a reason for anyone to panic, uh, but there are reasons for us to be vigilant. And as I say, we are uh, relieved and, uh, and pleased that none of the devices uh, have so far uh, been found to uh, pose a threat to public safety. This has taken a significant toll on our resources. Um, emergency deployment teams were uh, sent into the center of the city immediately upon these, uh, in these uh, reports. Um, bomb squad units from the uh, transit police, the state police, and the Boston police were fully deployed. Um, uh, there were uh, significant shuts, shutdowns of uh, not only highways, but uh, um, rail traffic uh, with the MBTA. And um, it, this has created a, an enormous uh, inconvenience to people in the city. So we're going to fully investigate this and get to the bottom of it. It's just about all of us and the individuals who might be placing these bombs, all these packages, I should say, should be warned that this is a, is a heavy penalty. It's imprisonment, two to five years for each one of them. So it's not, we're not playing around. Police Commissioner Ed Davis also saying that anyone heading home tonight using public transit should feel safe. At the same time, he said extra officers are going to be on duty to make sure everyone does feel safe. We expect we may hear from the mayor and the police commissioner later tonight. We're live at police headquarters. Dan Housley, 7 News. All right, Dan, you showed us the map of the, uh, the locations. The most recent device found at Fenway Park is still there. Sky 7 is there, and so is Linda Ergus. And Linda, you talked to someone who saw the object last week. If you can believe it, Randy, and this person thought it was a joke. Let's give you a shot of this right now. It is directly next to the gate C sign here. It was the owner of the cask and flag and who called police, we're told, about a half hour ago to let them know there was yet another one of these electronic devices. Now, the location, we should tell you, is right at the bleacher entrance across from the bars, Embassy, Avalon, and Access. The manager of the cask and flag in saying he saw the cartoon a week ago. Gag that someone like, somehow shimmied his way up there and put this bright light thing up there, and we all just kind of laughed about it. But we're all a little upset because you don't you would just you're defacing the Fenway Park. But at the same time, no one ever thought anything serious of it till today. Obviously, no threat, but police are keeping us at quite a distance right now. Again, another one of these electronic cartoons found right there at Gate C. We're not sure what is going to be happening, if that is going to be coming down within the next hour or so. We're, of course, standing by for any developments, but as you know, no threat here on Lansdowne Street. We're live in Boston. Linda Urgis, 7 News. All right, Linda, no uh, little impact right there at that moment. Uh, the discovery of these devices, though, caused major traffic problems throughout the day. Store Drive in Boston was shut down. And 7's Grant Greenberg is at the uh, Longfellow Bridge, where another of those signs was placed. Grant? Well, Randy, right now you have your regular evening commute, but as you said, Surrow Drive shut down for a, a short while. A few hours ago, is they found, police found one of these suspicious packages right over there. 
mixed into the beams under the Longfellow Bridge. They had to detonate it, and that created quite a, quite a chaos on the road and for the people riding the T. About 8.05 a.m., police say a passenger finds a suspicious package under I-93 by the Sullivan Square T-stop. 93 North and the Orange Line shut down for a good two hours. Until the bomb squad detonates a device they say looks like a circuit board but isn't explosive. It ruined people's commutes and created quite a scene. As I was coming down the side street, I heard one of them, um, it must have been an officer or maybe one of the, prop, one of the, one of the bomb squad people say uh, fire in the hole. And then? And I heard a detonation. A few hours later and a few miles away, Police detonate another suspicious package, this one under the Longfellow Bridge. Cars are kept off it, and red line service between Boston and Cambridge comes to a halt. That's very scary. Um, now you have me thinking if I should go on the red line. <laughs> now we know this was just a bad publicity stunt and not a scary, suspicious package. Still, people prefer the city be vigilant than take any chances. Can't take it as a hoax or anything. I'm glad they're doing what they're doing. You know, even if I'm late, it doesn't matter. I'd rather be alive. A couple of people we saw running here along the Charles River stopped us to ask if there were any updates, and we told them what this allegedly was a publicity stunt. They were speechless. They could not believe that someone would go ahead and do this. As far as the head of the MBTA, I spoke with him earlier after that first incident. He said a few years ago his first priority to get you quickly from point A to point B. His new priority, get you safely from point A to point B. We're live in Boston, Grant Greenberg, 7 News. Grant, thanks. And these devices were apparently part of a cartoon promotion. 7's Victoria Block is here with more on exactly what these objects are. Vicki? Well, first of all, we know it's a hoax and had suspected all along something was fishy because none of the devices turned out to be anything serious. But the proof came a couple of hours ago when Turner Broadcasting admitted that it was behind this chaotic mess. In a statement, it says the packages in question are magnetic lights that pose no danger. They're part of an out marketing campaign in 10 cities in support of Adult Swim's animated television show, Aquatine Hunger Force. They have been in place for two to three weeks in Boston, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Atlanta, Seattle, Portland, Austin, San Francisco, and Philadelphia. Parent company Turner Broadcasting is in contact with local and federal law enforcement on the exact locations of the billboards, and it says, we regret they were mistakenly thought to pose any danger. Whether the police department's lead takes them to the owner of this website is unclear, but he appears to know an awful lot about this project. He has photographs documenting 17 sites where the devices were planted and later found. At the tops of buildings, under bridges, at Fenway Park, all across the city, this little creature that lights up in the dark and makes an obscene gesture is on his website. It was also found over the entryway to a comic book store in Alston. It looked like the Moonanites, uh, made out of little lights like a light bright. Okay, Moonanites. Little lights like a light bright. Like a light they bright. They, they, didn't, they weren't lit up now, they but light they light up at night, which is why they had the battery pack to they light up. battery pack on? It had a battery pack, and that's what made everybody nervous, because they, they equate battery packs and wires and such with bombs. The website says that he is a graduate, a former student at Massachusetts College of Art, and we know that the Boston police are now talking with him. Seven News is at his house. We saw the police go inside. We will keep you updated when we find out more. For now, reporting live, I'm Victoria Block, 7 News. On 7 News, we'll have all the new developments on the story tonight at 10 on CW56 and back here for 7 News at 11. Twisted piles of metal. That's all that's left from a head-on horror on the highway. Police